Okay. So, since the first Everest 1 and Everest 2 studies, more than 16,000 patients had the mitral creep repair all over the world. And with the um, increases with the experience, the uh, device time is shorter right now, the implant rate success is a uh, about 95% and if the, at the beginning the, most of the patients were with the degenerative mitral regurgitations <coughs> right now it has shifted and two-thirds of the patients have, are with functional mitral incompetence. What about Israel? We have started the program in 2011, three centers and since the beginning of this year, with the reimbursement of these procedures, we uh, did this year 35 procedures. Hopefully, we'll have a few more until the end of this year. What about the MR reduction? We can see here data from Israel and uh, Europe. Uh, the MR reduction is more than two grades. Uh, it's between two and three grades. and as you remember, with the Everest trial, this m uh, less than moderate MR, it's a success, of course. Now, which are the patient groups in which significant clinical benefits has been reported? Patients with degenerative myotroid incompetence, decline for surgery, severe LV dysfunction, refractory to medical therapy, severe heart failure despite optimal medical therapy and two interested, interesting uh, populations are the CRT non-responders and the bivalvular diseases, severe AS and mitral incompetence. When we are dealing with these patients in the heart team, of course we are dealing with patients with significant mitral incompetence, of course functional or degenerative, with good echocardiographic criteria for eligibility, and I will show you this, with a very high level of surgical risk, most of our patients today are refused uh, for surgery and with a greater than one year life expectancy. What are the echocardiologist challenges? Of course, to screen these patients, to guide the procedures, and you see the procedural result in the catheterization lab and after that in the echo um, lab. When we are dealing with patient screening, of course, we are part of the heart team. So clinically suitable patient. After that, we are doing the TTE and the TE, of course, and we are looking for suitable mitral valve anatomy, a good technical chance to repair this valve with the mitral clip, that we have suitable monitoring possibilities and from our point of view it's a very good TEE from the beginning and as we are getting more and experience we are taking patients which are more and more borderline in terms of criteria. Most important is to have a simple common anatomically based vocabulary between all the members of the heart team, of course, and it's an echo uh, vocabulary. We are looking at the aorta as anterior, of course, A2, T2, the, the posterior, and lateral, the left lateral appendage, and medial, it's the fossa. Now, the first Everest criteria, the echocardiographic Everest criteria for mitral uh, clip was, were, of course, a significant mitral incompetence. Central jet to, with a pathology in the A2P2, a good coaptation lab with at least, of, uh, at least two millimeters and a coaptation depth less than 11 millimeters. For the de degenerative mitral valve, a flail gap less than 10 millimeters with a width less than 15 millimeters. And of course, we are not going to take uh, valves which are stenotic. The number is 
not less than four centimeters square metal valve area, of course, this is something that it's changing and if the leaflets are uh, pliable, we are taking even more uh, um, uh, with the less metal valve area and the uh, good <coughs> leaflet length. Here, this is an example of a functional MR. We can see a severe mitral incompetence, uh, central jet A2, P2, with a good coaptation length. So in this case, we have a good chance to have a good repair with this patient. What about the de degenerative mitral incompetence? This is more challenging, but even with, as we are more and more experienced, we can take those patients um, and put a clip with a very good result at the end. About the echo views, when we are assessing uh, those patients, so we need to have a few echocardiographic views which are baseline. It's the, for the transeptal, it's the uh, um, uh, bicaval and the uh, short axis for, for the septum. It's very important to have a good transeptal puncture. The intercommissural, it's a very important view and the LVOT view. For the transgastric view, today when we have the 3D and the X-plane, we are almost not using this type of view. So the X-plane has allowed us to um, see the valve simultaneously in two um, uh, pictures with 90 uh, degrees one from the other, as we can see here, we can see here the LVOT, we can see the clip which is in the left atrium above the mitral and the intercommissura. So one shot, we can see both images and it helps us a lot in also in choosing and in uh, conducting this type of repair in the catheterization lab. Of course, the 3D help us a lot, mainly to see the valve, to see the, the pathology, and to be sure that we are perpendicular on the central part of the valve, on the A2, P2. This is most important also when we are dealing with those patients in the lab, in the uh, echo lab before, and also in the uh, catheterization room. During the procedure, a very important, maybe the most important echo view is the uh, um, um, LVOT. Here we are doing the grasping, so it's about 120 degrees for a, a, a good grasping. And let's see some, some examples. This is a, um, a patient which is suitable for mitral clip. Uh, pathology in A2P2 central jet. This is the, uh, um, um, the picture before and this is during the, uh, the, the procedure. We can see a central jet around A2 in, in uh, the intercommissural view. On the left, we can see a um, case which is rejected. We have rejected this case because barely there is no posterior leaflet. And even today, as we are more and more experienced, this is a, a case that we would reject pre preliminary. On the right side, it's a case which is borderline. Why this is a borderline case? Because as we can see the cooptation it's a little bit uh, problematic here. The A2 it comes a little bit from, from above and the length of the cooptation is very, very borderline. So this is a little bit challenging. I think that at the beginning of our experience, we will not take this patient as our first patients, but today, as we are more and more experienced, this definitely can be a good candidate. This is a patient from uh, our hospital with the dilated cardiomyopathy, as you can see on the left uh, side, there is a malcoaptation 
We are admitting those patients a few days before. We are get, getting them a good, very good diuresis and uh, uh, anti failure treatment. We are trying to get the leaflets as clo as closer as they as as we can. This, of course, will ensure a uh, technical success during the procedure. And this is the result after one clip. This is another case from our hospital. You can see that there is a P2, what seems to be a cleft in the P2. We, in all those patients that we are not sure about uh, the anatomy, we are of course doing also a CT or even an MRI and we did a, uh, uh, a CT uh, on this patient and uh, it was indeed a cleft. Because for this patient we had no other chances, she was refused for surgery, we, our strategy was to try and to put a clip on the lateral part, to put a clip on the, the medial part and to see what is the result. And on the right side, the lower right side, you can see the result after only one clip on the lateral part of uh, what seems to be a cleft and it looks like a very nice result. We are using a lot the X-Plane. X-Plane is a very, very important tool for us in the assessment of those patients. Always look for the largest vena contracta and the, and the largest jet. We are putting our cursor on the middle portion of the, um, of the, of the valve and we are sweeping it uh, anterior and posterior and for the largest um, jet that we can see and uh, we are looking also on the uh, LVOT uh, image. This is a more challenging example that, um, of course, it, this is not our first case that we had, but definitely we can do those cases today. It's a prolapse, a P2 prolapse. We can see it very nice here in the 3D, a P2 prolapse. It's a little bit more challenging, but of course it's doable and we are doing those cases today. Which cases we are going to reject for mitral clip? We can see here a rheumatic heart disease, a stenotic valve, thickened leaflets. There is something here which is very mobile, so many, many reasons not to take this patient for a mitral clip. As we saw before, a cleft mitral with um, a, a bowel disease. Of course, if we have other options for those patients, it's better. But if there is no other option, I think that this kind of patient is not an absolute rejection for this kind of uh, treatment and we will go and we will try to uh, put a clip um, here. This was rejected for mitral clip. As we can see, there is a calcification in the grasping area. So this is um, the risk here for rupture when we are going to put the clip is very high. So this is definitely not a good candidate for a mitral valve clip. And maybe the most important part for us is to have a good imaging. Those repairs can take two, three hours. And we, if we are starting with this kind of bad uh, imaging from the beginning, so I think that it's better not to have those patients because it's essential to have a very, very good TEE here. So, when we are screening our uh, patients in the echo lab, of course, patients with significant MR, not to have calcification on the leaflets and on the tip of the leaflets, not too severe leaflet restri uh, restriction, and it's something which we can debate on it. If we have other options, it's better. If not, I would not totally reject those patients. Um, not too severe flay leaflet, um, preferably not to have a cleft between A2 and P2, no prior surgery of the mitral valve, no masses, intracardiac masses or thrombus, 
no significant mitostenosis and a very good imaging quality of the TE. So, in conclusion, the echo, the TTE and the TE is an essential diagnostic and a screening tool for mitral club clip candidates. Do always a TTE first, make a general assessment and look for the exclusion criteria, then a preprocedural TEE. Be sure that you have a good imaging, 2D and 3D and explain and understand very well the anatomy. When you need it, always do another uh, imaging modalities like CT and MRI and very important to have a very simple and common language between you and the other members of the HAR team in order to uh, have successful results. Thank you very much.